Hi friends, welcome back for another lesson. This is week 10, day one. And while we're still in our sun, moon, and stars module, module two, we're going to be shifting our focus to reading and writing poetry. For today's lesson, you are going to need your thinking cap, your listening ears, and that's it. Let's get our minds and our bodies ready to learn by playing Simon Says. Let me put myself in the middle here. All right. Find a spot where you have plenty of room. Remember, to play Simon Says, I will give you a command. And you will follow the command if the command starts with Simon Says. If it doesn't, you don't follow the command. Let's see if you're ready. Simon Says, stand up. Sit down. I didn't say Simon Says. Simon Says, Rotate like the earth. Simon says, stop. Simon says, show me what you do when the stars are shining. Some of you might stay up late when the stars are out, but most of us are sleeping. Simon says, show me how the stars twinkle at night. Stop. I didn't say Simon says. Simon says, turn yourself into a crescent moon. Simon says, turn yourself into a big round moon. Simon says, show me what you're doing when the sun is rising. What are you doing when the sun is rising? Some of you might still be sleeping, but some of you might be waking up getting ready for your day. Simon says, sit in your chair. Stand up from your chair. I didn't say Simon says. Simon says, hold out your arms like the sun and rise and set. Good job. I wonder if I was able to fool you a few times. Okay, now that our bodies have moved a little bit and we've gotten our minds thinking, let's get started with today's learning target. Today, we have two learning targets. Our first one says, I can define what it means for work to be high quality. Let's read that one again. I can define what it means for work to be high quality. Now, in this learning target, there's something new that we haven't talked about, and that's the word high quality. You'll notice that it's in our second learning target too. So let's read it in the second target. I can analyze models of high quality work. Hmm. I can define what it means for work to be high quality, and I can analyze high quality work. Tell me, what do you think high quality means? Right, it means good or the best, or we can even say it's excellent. Say that with me. Excellent. High quality work is excellent. So we are going to be defining what it means for your work to be excellent. What does that look like? Then we're going to analyze models or examples of high quality work, of excellent work. Now there's another word in here that might be new for some of us, analyze. 
Analyze means to look at something really closely. So we'll be looking really closely at models of excellent work. I have a piece of work, a piece of writing that is high quality or excellent, and it was written by a first grader. This piece of work is called A Life Cycle of a Butterfly by Havana. We're going to read this text that Havana has written, and then we're going to go through and decide what made this text so excellent, so high quality. Then we're going to analyze all the different pieces. Are you ready to read? Read along with me. A Life Cycle of a Butterfly by Havana. The egg is sticky. When a caterpillar first hatches, it eats its eggshell. The chrysalis has a little hole so it can breathe. The caterpillar molts the skin and it turns into a chrysalis. A chrysalis can last a year. When the chrysalis is dark, it is close to turning into a butterfly. I just learned a whole bunch of facts from this piece of writing from Havana. And I have to say that I think this writing is really high quality. It was easy to read. It taught us something. The illustrations were detailed. But I want you to tell me, why do you think that this work is considered high quality or excellent? What do you think? I agree, I think it's high quality, but we have to prove that and we need to define it. That's what our learning target asked us to do, to define what makes her work so excellent. Now, in order for us to define it, we're going to use a checklist. Have you ever used a checklist or maybe a to-do list where you go through each of the items and you check it off? We do that with our learning targets every time, right? to show if we met the target or we didn't met the, meet the target, right? Let's use a checklist for this piece of writing. Our checklist is called High Quality Work Checklist. There are two pages. Here is page one. Here is page two. Page one is mostly about the details of the text. And page two is mostly about the conventions. And conventions are the rules to writing, the spelling, the punctuation, all of those things that make the, the text or the writing easy to read. So looking at both pages, that's a lot to look at. So let's get rid of this page for now and we'll come back to it later. Boop. Now we can just focus on this checklist. The first one says, Descriptions make sense and create a picture in the reader's mind. Descriptions make sense and create a picture in the reader's mind. When I was reading that writing from Havana, did you feel like it made sense? I think so too. And when I was reading it, could you paint a picture in your mind of what was happening with the chrysalis? Yes. Now we have to really make sure because our checklist wants us to have evidence or proof. So let's bring up her writing. And I am going to make myself just a little bit smaller so that we can really focus on her work. Okay, let's read her writing on this page. And we wanna make sure does it make sense and does it paint a picture? Okay, we're, we're just gonna focus on the first sentence. The chrysalis has little holes so it can breathe. Does that make sense? It sure does. Now this time, I'm gonna read that sentence and you are gonna close your eyes and see if you can paint that picture in your head. Okay, close your eyes. The chrysalis has little holes so it can breathe. Open your eyes. 
show me a thumbs up if you were able to paint a picture of that chrysalis with holes. Yeah, and we can see it in the illustration too. So I would say, yes, her writing had great descriptions that made sense and it created a picture in our mind. And she did that on every single sentence. Now we have to have evidence. So let's drag this sentence all the way up here. That's our evidence or our proof, okay? Nod your head if you're following along. All right, let's go to the next one. Uses adjectives correctly. Adjectives are describing words. Does she use her adjectives correctly? Let's look for some evidence. Now, we've already used this page, so let's look at a different page of her writing. Let's look at this one. The egg is sticky. Egg is the noun, right? The egg is sticky. What word describes that egg in this sentence? Where's the adjective? Sticky. Sticky is the adjective. What is the egg? The egg is sticky. She's using lots of adjectives throughout her writing. This is just one example, right? So we can say, yes, she is using her adjectives correctly. And for an example of proof, let's put this sentence in. Do you agree? The egg is sticky. Sticky is a great adjective. Ugh, sticky. Okay, let's keep going. This side of our checklist is done. So let's look at page two of our checklist. Now this page is really focusing on conventions or the rules of writing. The first one says, correctly spells words from the word wall. Read that with me. Correctly spells words from the word wall. You may have a word wall in your classroom or your virtual classroom. Sometimes our word walls only have our high frequency words or our sight words. And sometimes they have vocabulary words too. The word wall helps us spell all of those high frequency words correctly. Let's look at her writing and see if she did this. I'm not sure if she did. So we're gonna have to look for some proof. Okay, the egg is sticky. When a caterpillar first hatches, it's, it eats its eggshell. Now that word when, that is a sight word. Hmm, or a high frequency word. Does she spell the word when correctly? She does. W-H-E-N, when. And I'm thinking that we can go ahead and say yes, because throughout our text, there were many, many other sight words that she was spelling correctly. Words like has, and, the, is, it, lots of different high frequency words. So for our evidence, I'm gonna put the words when and has so that we can show two pieces of evidence to prove that we know she can use her word wall. Our next one says, uses complete sentences with the first word capitalized. Now we know that this is an important thing. You need to capitalize the first letter of your sentence. So let's go through her writing and see if she did that. The egg is sticky. Did she capitalize her first letter? When a caterpillar first hatches, it eats its eggshell. Did she capitalize her first letter? Good. Uses complete sentences with the first word capitalized. We can go ahead and mark, yes, she does this. Now, we also know that she did this on the other page too, right? And we'll check in just a minute. Now, we're just going to put a little blurb over here about how we know that she's doing it because we can't fit every sentence and every capital letter into this box. 
So we'll write, we can see a capital letter at the start of every sentence. That's our proof or our evidence. Okay, let's keep going. Uses ending punctuation. Okay, let's see. The egg is sticky. Do you see ending punctuation? Yes, she has a period at the end of the sentence. Let's check the next one. When a caterpillar first hatches, it eats its eggshell. Do you see ending punctuation? Yes, you do. And she does this throughout all of her excellent writing. So we can mark yes. Now we can't put every sentence into our evidence box. So we'll write, we can see a period at the end of every sentence. Now here we have both sides of our checklist. Let's go through and see, did she get a yes on every single category? Descriptions make sense and create a picture in the reader's mind. Yes. Uses adjectives correctly. Yes. Correctly spells words from the word wall. Yes. Uses complete sentences with the first word capitalized. Yes. Uses ending punctuation. Yes. Now, because we're on a video, I didn't have all of the time to look at every single page. But good readers and good writers always check all of their writing. Today, we just checked little parts of our writing, but we were able to find evidence that she can do every single one of these things. Since we were able to check yes throughout the whole checklist, do you think that her work is high quality work? Show me a thumbs up if you do. Yes, this is excellent work. And we knew that it was excellent right after we finished it, but we had to really analyze it and look closely at her writing for us to really be able to decide if it was high quality work. You are going to be writing your own piece really soon. And in order for you to write your piece, you have to know what high quality work looks like. And this today was a great model of what the high quality work looks like. Excellent work. You did a really good job looking at the work, defining it, and analyzing it. Today we had two learning targets. Let me move myself right here. Our first learning target said, I can define what it means for work to be high quality. Check. We decided that the definition of high quality work is that it has lots of details, like our checklist told us, and that the convections of spelling are correct, and that we overall think that the work is excellent. Our second target said, I can analyze models of high quality work. Check, we did that too. We looked really closely at this model writing. When I say model writing, I just mean an example. Good job looking at high quality work today. I can't wait to see you get started on your high quality writing. I'll see you next time. Bye friends.